Uh, I think the first thing to say is that this administration has always been honest. Even before the NBS came out with statistics, we said, look, technically we think we're in recession. Absolutely. We didn't wait for the NBS to come and confirm it because the first um, uh, part of having a strategy is to know your situation. The situation was showing us that, look, it's negative. So we came out, I think I, I came out last month at the Senate and said, look, we're technically in recession. Let's start having this discussion so that we now know how to get ourselves out of it. And that's what I would like to focus on. Now, the question about inflation at 17.1. Our sense on the inflation, if you dimension that what's causing this inflation, is what we call cost-push inflation. That is, because the exchange rate has changed, because petrol price has changed, that has changed the prices of goods because that transmits itself into pricing. It costs more to move goods, and therefore the sale price of, of goods has gone up. It is cost-push inflation. Now, when you have cost-push inflation, it is unlikely, it's structural inflation. It is not going to respond to monetary um, policy tools, such as increasing the rate of interest. It will not. We have to address the structural causes of the, of the inflation. And what are those structural causes? And indeed, when we leave here, the next meeting that we're going for is to talk around accelerating the process for concession in the refineries. Why? Because 30% of our FX demand is um, um, fuel. Meanwhile, we export crude, but we import our fuel, which makes no sense. If we get the refineries working, we can begin to address the structural components of inflation, and that's what we're trying to do. The other thing to mention is that the trend, the, the rate of inflation growth has slowed down, and that's a good sign. Because as we're coming in, and, and, and again, looking at the components, what were the components that drove it? It was power costs, it was food price. That's really where it's hurting people in the pocket. You've heard from the Minister of Agriculture, and the NBS statistics have confirmed it. Agricultural output is increasing. That's extremely good news. The other good news in those uh, fairly um, sobering results was solid minerals output is increasing. So what are we saying? The structural things that we said we are doing are beginning to work. We just need to be very patient. Um, the, the more fundamental question, are we confused about the economy? Hmm. Uh, um, let me start off by explaining and contexting where we are. We found out, first thing is, you don't just wake up and find yourself in recession. It is a process. We have been heading in this direction for the last six years. What accelerated it was the drop in oil prices. And there's no getting away from it. At a time when the global economy too is in trouble. So it's the worst possible time for us. Are we confused? Absolutely not. We have said from the beginning, how are we going to get ourselves out of this recession? One, we must make sure that we diversify our economy. We cannot, there are too many of us to keep on relying on oil. And we can see what's happened at the output data on the oil and gas sector. What's happened in the Niger Delta has dragged down the GDP of the entire economy. We're too dependent on oil. Whereas 87% of our GDP is non-oil. It is solid minerals, it is agriculture. So let us drive those other areas. And therefore the discovery of nickel, very exciting. Very exciting. That has nothing to do with oil. That's an export commodity. And we have huge quantities um, 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 discovered. Now, what does it need? You see, the, the thing with the oil industry is it's quite easy to do. It's almost like lazy money. It's a small area. You just pump up the oil and put it onto ships. It's a lot more difficult to grow your solid minerals and agriculture. But we're putting together all the enabling environment for that. Rail. We're working right now on resuscitating the old rail line. Just to run freight. It's too slow for passengers, but we can use it for freight. What does that mean? That means that some of the agricultural produce that is currently rotting can be put onto trains, moved down to where it can be processed much more cheaply than currently. Remember, most of our produce moves on the roads, and you all know the condition of our roads. Why are we here? Because we spent, all we were doing was pumping the oil and using the money on recurrent expenditure. We were not investing. The NBS statistics are clearly showing that the level of investment has gone up. So we're moving away from consumption into investment. What does investment do? It's, it's permanent. If you build a road, it's there for 40 years. If you build railway, this railway we want to revive was done in the colonial days, and it's still there. So we have to invest in capital. That is what this administration had said was our economic strategy. No, we're not confused. The times are confusing, but we are not confused. We're extremely focused. We know that if we can just bear 
and get through this difficult period, Nigeria is going to be better for it. And I must say, those who are criticising us, not one person has come up and said, this is what you should do. No. All they're saying is, we don't like what we see. And we don't like it either, but it's inevitable. For as long as we rely on oil, and the price of oil remains low, and the quantity of oil remains low, we can't grow. So we've got to grow our non-oil economy. And that takes, that's more difficult to do. That means fixing the roads. That means fixing the rail. That means doing our airports. And all the money we've released is going towards those capital projects. And we're very, very, very um, protective of ensuring that the capital money uh, expenditure released goes to the right things. Even look today at the type of contracts we're letting. Those are jobs being created. Real jobs in, in the University of Lagos, in the University of Ibadan. Those are jobs. We're not letting contracts for sensitization. We're not letting contracts for, you know, jamboree and wasteful things. We're letting contracts for capital projects. And that's what's going to get this economy moving. So I, I, I think that we, we, we have a long way to go. We're not confused and we're not deceiving ourselves that everything is rosy. It's not. It's a difficult time for Nigeria, but I think Nigeria is in the right hands. And if we can stick with our strategy, we still have some adjustments to make. I think we need to make some adjustments in monetary policy. It's quite clear we do, and we will do that. We're working on that. We need to try and find a way to support the manufacturing sector better, and we will do that. But look at all the things we've done. We've invested in capital. We have stabilised a lot of the state governments to enable them to pay salaries with the budget support programme. Some states had not paid salaries for six months. Now they're able to at least begin to pay again. So there's a lot of hope in what we're doing, but it's a difficult time. And the alternative is what? To do what we've been doing in the past and push the problem down the line for the next generation. We've chosen not to do that. It's not the most popular route, but it's the right route. So we're not confused, we're optimistic.